we got double duty today. Just off the back of the recap from Catalonia, we had more of the cobbled classics. Again, Wevelga. And it's only five and a half months since we had the last one that Mads Peterson took the crown at. And a little bit of cycling gods not wanting to show love to the the winningest of history here. Uh, you might have heard just before the race got off today, the Trek team and the Bora Hansgrohe team uh, both were, were removed from the competition due to various COVID tests or uh, COVID um, positives on the team support staff. Now, it was a big dagger for Trek, who are just red hot right now and had a great team coming in. Uh, including the returning champion, Mads Peterson, and a bit of a blow for Bora Hansgrohe as well. Now, this the team did not include Peter Sagan, who is tied for the most wins at Ghent Wevelgem with three, uh, but it was going to feature Pascal Ackerman, who really needs to get things going for himself. So, a uh, little bit of drama uh, going into the race, and we'll kind of break down how that impacted the race. Um, We'll basically just kind of pick up with um, like 84k to go, I'd say, uh, because you know we already had some splitting. Stibar ripped the peloton apart on the Kemmelberg, and the winds were bad, as often you know happens uh, out in this part of the world. And what comes of that? Well, echelons, splits, and they were everywhere. Um, so we'll just kind of continue on. It was you could literally retell this whole race and it would take an hour because there's is just so much back and forth and so much movement but we'll just kind of cut right to it 50k to go we had a pretty ominous set of riders up front there's still you know quite a ways to go with 50 to go but we had nine strong guys up front we had sam bennett danny van poppel wout van art nathan van huidonk Sonny Cabrelli, Michael Matthews, Giacomo Nizzolo, Matteo Trenton, and Stefan Kuhn. So uh, 30K to go, and we've still really got this group intact. And uh, you look at Sam Bennett, and he just would not be dropped. He's the guy that everyone coming in, he just had his first win uh, of a day race for in the World Tour this past week, first of his career, looking to make it a double. And it's really, with what we've seen, <clears throat> Bennett versus the world. Now, unfortunately, Michael Morku was dropped earlier, so it was just him in the bunch, but he would not be dropped. And it, it was like 30K to go, coming over the Kemmelberg. There's images of him uh, dry heaving, just absolutely wasting himself. Uh, but he was still going hard, taking pulls, and with 20K to go, we still had contact. Now, with 16K to go, continuing to fast forward, uh, we've got uh, yeah, Wout's doing some good work. Van Hoydunk, his teammate, pulling at the front, uh, making a bit of an attack so that the others had to chase. That was finally when it was enough for Bennett to finally lose the wheels, and it was 13K to go that this group was further reduced down to seven. So at this point, eyes are kind of at Stefan Kung, who's really the, the big risk for a long-range attack. And so would he do that? That's partly why they sent... Van Hoydunk off the front, keep it hot, challenge people, make it difficult to attack. And in the last 2K, Hoydunk again at the front, and we finally get the inevitable attack of Stefan Kung, but Van Hoydunk able to pull it back, giving Wout a free rest and a free ride to stay in contact with the front. And very rare that Wout has any assistance uh, in the finale because he's so strong, he's usually dropped everybody. So what does that mean? Well, you guessed it, a win for Wout. And he just sprints that one right into the finish line. And kind of no surprise, a uh, bunch sprint go to Wout in this case. Just the race is so difficult that the sprinters just don't have it in their legs in the finale that they normally would. And you didn't have the best of the best sprinters in there at this point. Um, we had you know, the seven that we talked about at this point was Sam Bennett being dropped. So it's really, you know, Nitzolo, Matthews, Matteo Trentin, Cabrelli. And, you know, Wout, Wout can take care of business there. And so behind Wout, we had the Italian barrage in order. Nitzolo second, Matteo Trentin in third, and Sonny Cabrelli fourth. Michael Matthews fifth, Stefan Kung sixth, and Van 
Hoy Donk rolling in in seventh, pumping his fist in the air, just stoked that they put Wout on top of the podium. So Wout was delighted. Uh, post-race interview, Michael Matthews suggested he wouldn't have minded having some slower riders up front at the end. Wouldn't we all? Um, so, uh, yeah, the, the other thing I want to mention, aside from not having Trek and not having Bora, and I'd, and I'd love to hear everybody's take on how that impacted the race, surely it was consequential to not have some of those riders in there. Um, there was also a reroute of the course because there was a fire in one of the towns that they were rolling through, and so they had to adjust the course on the fly. So those things aside, and I'd like to hear what you guys think about uh, how those impacted the race, but in addition to Wout adding another classic to his Palmares, and really what he's going to be wanting is to get his revenge in Flanders next weekend, that's for sure. But for, for those behind him, for Nietzsche, it was a great day. I mean, six times he's competed here, including today. He's only finished twice, including, t- including today's second place, and it's his first top ten. So, for a guy who's never won a classic, he's only prior to today finished here once before, and it wasn't a top ten. Great, great result, and certainly his best. Now behind him, Matteo Trenton. This race is like motherhood and apple pie for him. Four straight top tens and back-to-back third places. He's just great at this type of this type of race. Uh, and so now, not on the podium, but quietly having a good season, Sonny Cabrelli. Seemingly always in the mix in the classics here. Fourth today, he was sixth at Kerna Brussels Kerna, and eighth at Milan San Remo. So keep an eye out for him. Uh, you know if he's going to be lurking around the top ten in all the classics, maybe he gets lucky. Maybe he gets a hot strike. So good result for him. And then and then back to Michael Matthews. This was his best result. Um, you know, not not the biggest race for him, but he's never turned in a result here. And it, uh, so you know, good job. I mean, to to get to get fifth and to have that be your best result, okay, we'll take it. Um, and then and then the last guy who who you know fell off the out of the mix here was Sam Bennett, and I think all the eyes were on were on him. You know, if he and Morku could take it to the line. They're just so strong right now that he'd win. And look, he he left. He raced with guts. He left it. He literally left his guts out there. Um, but it wasn't going to be today that he was going to double up on his uh, one day one day race championship. So he'll live to fight another day. So that was Gen Wevelgum. I mean, it's a shame to not have those you know those teams in there. But it was a it was a solid race. Incredible job by Jumbo Visma, Van Hoydunk setting it up for Wout, just great. And that's the gear up for Flanders. I mean, that is, Flanders next weekend is going to be absolutely lit. And that was, so this was five and a half months since we did it previously. It'll have been even less uh, for for Flanders, which, um, you know, was, was really the finale of the season last year. Wout losing the sprint by a wheel, you know, on the wheel toss to, to Nemesis Matthew Vanderpool. And I think we can ex- expect exactly the same, um, and maybe even a, maybe even a better race than we saw last year, if that's possible. But I'll be here to break it down. Love to hear what you think, what your predictions are for Flanders. Is it going to be the Wout and Matthew Vanderpool show, or is somebody going to disrupt it? Are these Trek guys going to be hungry and out for vengeance? We'll see. Let me know what you think. And until then, thanks for listening. It's a door breakaway. Break.